This is uh, test number six, and this test is uh, mainly based on projectile motions. So, if you've been uh, writing this test up to now, so uh, here it is projectile motion. So, if you have marks more than uh, ten for this uh, test, meaning of that is uh, that you have enough mathematical skills to follow even the remaining parts as well. That's why it is really crucial that you write these tests regularly as I am giving you this. Right. Let's do the first question. From top of a tower, a ball A is dropped, B and C are horizontally projected with distinct velocities. If the time required by for balls to fall is T1, T2 and T3 and uh, they are asking for a combination between uh, these times. So here a one ball is dropped so the initial velocity of that ball is zero to this side then another ball horizontally projected let's say at V1 then there's another ball horizontally projected V2 then they would have a, these parabolic paths, right? If you think about uh, vertical motion, so whenever there is a projectile, you need to think those projectiles in terms of vertical and horizontal, horizontal and vertical motion, right? Separately. That happens simultaneously, but you have to think those separately whenever you are doing problems. Here I am thinking only about uh, vertical motion for all, all of these balls. If you think about A, initial velocity is zero and for the vertical motion it drops a height capital H. That is for A and let's say that time is T1. <clears throat> then if you think about B, for B also, vertically downwards, velocity is zero. It has a horizontal velocity, but vertical velocity downwards is zero. And it falls the same height. So the time it takes also for this component to reach from here to here should also be same. So T2 also is same. It is the same for C as well. For C as well, initial velocity component, vertical component is zero. So the vertical motion of all these three balls is the same. So we can say that vertical component takes the same time for all three to reach the ground. This uh, vertical motion is what determines the flying time of an object, right? Flying time of a projectile is determined by the vertical motion, right? So for all three, the vertical motion is identical. So if they are identical, the time for all three to reach the ground should also be same. These parts differed because uh, horizontal components changes. Right? That's the only reason there. So the answer should be third one for that. Okay, uh, second question. An F-35, so F-35 is a jet, right? It is a fighter jet. With a speed 540 kilometers per hour, plans to drop a bomb when it is at a height 2 kilometers. It is at a height 2 kilometers. And it is moving at 540 kilometers per hour. Since we have to deal with the gravitational acceleration in meters per square second, I'll convert this into meters per second. So it is 18.5 says 3. So 30, 30 times 550 meters per second. Okay. So as the fighter jet is 
F-35 is flying like this, it releases a bomb. So the initial velocity of the ball, sorry, initial velocity of the bomb also should be the velocity of the fighter jet. So initial velocity becomes like this, horizontal and 150 meters per second. And it falls like this onto the ground. So in the question, what they ask is horizontal distance between F-35 and target that boat should be trapped. So the target should be here, right? If the bomb to be land here, the target should be here. Uh, so what they ask is uh, this distance, horizontal distance from the F-35 is here as it releases the bomb. Then what they ask is this distance. So when you get a question like this, first you have to find the flying time. Flying time means this time. So to find that, you can consider the vertical components. I'll just apply uh, V uh, to find the flying time. I'll apply uh, S equals UT half squared downwards. So S is 2 kilometers, meaning 2,000 meters. Initial velocity. Vertical initial velocity is zero, right? Total velocity is only horizontal. Vertical velocity is zero. So I have to substitute zero here. Half acceleration 10 t squared. So we have 5. 5 t squared equals 2000. 400 equals t squared. So t equals 20 seconds. So that's the flying time. I used only vertical components to find the flying time. So once you know the flying time, uh, this component reaches from here to here, here to here within that flying time. Then for horizontal motion, just apply S equals UT. So S is R, U is this one, right? 150 times time is 20. 30, two zeros, meters, right? So three kilometers. So if you are moving on the uh, F-35, you have to release the object when this distance is three kilometers, right? You have to release the bomb when this distance is three kilometers ahead. So the bomb would land there. If you released, when it comes here, right above the target, you would uh, miss the target by three kilometers. So I have to understand that. So the answer should be third one. Right, uh, third question. A ball is projected horizontally with 15 meters per second from a tower of height 20 meters. So we have a tower, 20 meter tower, and the horizontal velocity of the object projected is 15 meters per second. So the object would move like this. So here what they ask is just before it hits the ground. So it would hits the ground at a velocity like this. What they ask is uh, that velocity that ball hits the ground. So again, you have to think about vertical and horizontal components separately. So the, let's say horizontal component is V1, vertical component is V2. So you need to find V1 and V2 separately and the resultant of that should be V. They, they ask is the resultant, right? You know that horizontal velocity component does not change in a projectile because there is no acceleration horizontally. So V1, you don't have to find that. V1 obviously should be 15 meters per second. But here, V2, you have to find that. So to find that, I'll apply this one downwards. Initial velocity is zero, right? Because totally the velocity is horizontal at here. So 
final velocity here that is v2 squared equals initial velocity 0 plus 2 acceleration 10 right because this falls under gravity 10 s is 20 meters 4400 then v2 is 20 meters per second okay so without involving uh, time we found v1 and v2 you don't have to involve time there that's why i use this equation right since we know v1 and v2 you can uh, if you want you can take that on a rectangle show these vectors in a rectangle what do you get v2 here that is v2 is 20 v1 is 15 then the diagonal gives us v if you want you can find the time uh, angle as well but they have, haven't asked about angle they only asked about uh, magnitude of resultant velocity this one v so just apply Pythagoras theorem so v squared equals 15 squared plus 20 squared then you have to take the root of that so 225 this is 400 when you add those two it becomes 625 root 625 is 25 meters per second that's the resultant of velocity just before it hits the ground resultant of velocity image is the velocity actual velocity there just before it hits the ground right so whenever they ask this velocity you cannot say the velocity is only v2 or v1 you need both right both means you, you have to consider both of these in a projectile when you are considering both of these velocities both velocities you need to take the result right there's no any other way so the answer should be 25 meters per second which is the first option right <clears throat> up to here we the initial well we discuss questions whose velocities are initial velocities are horizontal right so after this one the questions are initial velocity uh, it makes a acute angle acute angle with horizontal so the remaining questions are based on those so first uh, because uh, all those questions are based on uh, that velocity inclined horizontal velocity first i'll just uh, prove those basic equations right so in those basic equations so it will be easier so i don't have to prove this again and again so incline velocity like this then it goes on a projectile like this so here you need to find range horizontal range and maximum height so i'm going to take uh, equations based on these right for maximum height and horizontal range first i'll find maximum height so to find the maximum height just apply uh, before that you need to make this u into normal components this is u sine theta vertical component here u cos theta you know that uh, at the top this doesn't change right horizontal component does not change which is u cos theta but vertical component becomes zero at the top so you can say it is zero here just apply v squared u squared to s at the top final velocity is zero so i'm applying equations from o to a final velocity is zero right at the top initial velocity is u sin theta make it squared plus two times gravitational acceleration is downwards so minus g i'm applying the equation upwards 
so this should be minus and at the top as it reaches the top it gains the maximum height so displacement should be capital H this is a negative term take this to the other side so it becomes 2g capital H equals u is squared sine is squared theta then capital H is equal u is squared over 2g sine is squared over theta okay so this is a maximum height so I'll write this from a side because this will be useful later for the so I'm not going to prove this again right so this is for the maximum height then we are going to need flying time equation for flying time so for that ut plus half a d squared I'm applying the equation from O to B so that is the flying time for the whole motion so as the object completes this path vertical component goes up comes down right as is complete this vertical component comes up, goes up comes down to the ori original position meaning after the flying time for the vertical component displacement is zero it goes up comes down as this goes here so s is zero okay uh, the initial velocity upwards it is vertically uh, u sine theta and t plus half acceleration downwards it is minus g and t squared right so we have a negative term i'll take it to the other side becomes positive u sine theta times t cancel t from both side then t equals cross multiply 2u sine theta divided by g so this is for the flying time right so flying time also i'll just uh, right from a side this is for the flying time then the another one we need is uh, range this capital R <coughs> so to find the range you can apply obviously you have to apply the equation horizontally s equals ut so the range is equal u means u cos theta u cos theta horizontally right time is 2u sine theta divided by g okay what do you get so r is equal to 2u squared sine theta cos theta divided by g so this is the horizontal range so these will be useful as we are doing questions later so r is equals 2u squared divided by g sine theta cos theta right you don't have to rem if you remember this it's better but for essay questions you cannot use this at once you don't have to remember this actually you just have to apply this one and quickly gain this right if you remember it's better right you can apply those for when you are doing mcqs if you remember but if not it's no problem just quickly you have to derive these at least these three okay right so i'll just uh, erase this and keep this here right now we can do fourth question an object that can be projected with a speed u gains a horizontal range u squared over 2g angle of velo initial velocity that makes with horizontal range is So this uh, u is given this theta, then it makes a uh, this one, and also they have given horizontal range as u is squared over two g, right? U is squared over two g. Okay. Then I am going to use this equation. You know that. Uh, According to that one, R is equal to 2u squared over g sine theta cos theta. So in this one, they say this R is equal to u squared over 2g. And they are asking for this theta, right? So you say u squared over 2g. 
I'll cancel u squared over g from both sides. You get 2 sin theta cos theta equals 1 over 2. Right? This 2 sin theta cos theta is sin 2 theta. Right? When you expand sin 2 theta, you get sin 2 sin theta cos theta. Then this is half. Half means sin 30, right? Sin 30 is half. What does it mean? Sin 2 theta equals sin 30. So 2 theta should be equal to 30. And theta should be equal to, when you divide it by 2, 15 degrees. Theta should be equal to 15 degrees. So if you project this with a 15 degree inclination with the horizontal, you get u squared over 2g of horizontal range. Another thing is, you know that in projectiles, this is one of the angles. In order to have the same horizontal range, we have two related angles. If one angle is theta, what should be the another angle? Should be 90 minus theta. One angle is theta, another angle should be 90 minus theta. For both of these angles, we will have the same horizontal range. Okay. So here, theta is 15. So the another angle should be 90 minus 15, which is 75. So for 15 degrees and 75 degrees, for both, we will have the same range. Okay. Further, if I explain that, uh, for 15 degrees, we will have this much range. This is 15 degrees. For 75 degrees, this goes up like this, but it still lands on the same position. Also, so always there's a two angles except for 45 degrees. For, for all the other angles, there's a always related two angles to have the same horizontal range. Okay, you have to remember that. So the answer should be fifth one there. Answer should be fifth one. Right, uh, fifth question. Maximum height that an object goes if it is projected with velocity 100 root 2, making an angle 45 degrees. If you want, you can use this, okay? Because this is not a complicated question, so I, a question I'll just uh, prove that from the beginning. Just apply in a these laws uh, fundamental equations. So the initial velocity 100 root 2 and this angle is given as 45 degrees. First thing you need to find capital H. First thing you have to do is you have to resolve this initial velocity. So 100 root 2 cos 45. 100 root 2, cos 45 is 1 over root 2. Root 2 cancels off, you get 100. Then the vertical component, 100 root 2 sin 45. Sin 45 also 1 over root 2. That also should be 100 meters per second. So those are the initial velocity components. Uh, velocity, I mean components of you know, initial velocity. You need to find the maximum height. So what do you do? Just apply this one, right? So at the top, vertical component is zero. Uh, U is 100 squared plus two. Gravitational acceleration downwards, minus 10 and capital H. So we have 20 H, take this to the other side equals 100 times 100, meaning 100 is squared, just divide by 20. So h is 500 meters, get it? Height is 500 meters. Uh, you can find that using this equation as well, right? Because this is a simple e one, 
not it's less complicated i just uh, use the i derived this from the beginning right or else you can use this one uh, but you don't have to remember this one okay second one is the answer there right uh, sixth question if the object in previous question just touches top of a tower with height 180 meters distance to the tower from the projected point is right so this is a somewhat of a different question So this is the projectile. All the things are same as before, right? Initial velocity. So 100 root 2, vertical component 100, horizontal component 100. This one. They say, we know that maximum height in the previous question, we found the maximum height as 500 meters. So this is 500 meters, right? We don't need that now. They say that there are two towers which has heights, which have heights 180 meters. So as you can see, so this is symmetrical between these two sides, right? So there can be two towers like this. So there are two towers which has 180 meters. that touches the top as the object moves in the this uh, parabolic path so what they ask is distance to the tower from the position of projector so one distance is this one let's say x another distance from this point is y so there are two so when you solve the problem you need to get two answers there one is this answer and another one is this answer, right? So what do we do? <coughs> so I say this is one, A, B, C. So from O to A, I'm going to apply this equation, vertically upwards. Doesn't reach the top, right? Just reach here to 180 meters initial velocity vertical component 100 time is t plus half acceleration downwards minus 10 now t squared 180 equals 100 t minus 5 t squared so we got a quadratic equation here <coughs> take this term to this side you need to simplify this 100 t plus 180 equals 0 so what's the meaning of this? Earlier I told you that there must be two answers here, right? So from the quadratic equation, typically we get two answers, right? Just divide this by 5. So t squared minus 20t plus 3, 6 equals 0. Factor this. So if, if you factor this uh, 36, I think 80 times 2. So 18t minus 2t plus 36 equals 0. Take t out, t minus 18 minus 2 out, t minus 18 equals 0. So take t minus 18 out. Remaining t minus 2 equals 0. So we have t minus 18 equals 0, that is one of the answers. Another one, t minus 2 equals 0. So time is 18 seconds. Another time is O. Another time is 2 seconds. Got it? So for time, we got two answers. Both answers are valid because both are positive. One is 2 seconds, another one is 18 seconds. So we can assume time for this object to reach from here to here should be the 2 seconds and from here to here should be the 18 seconds got it okay now we found the times 
let's say we you need to find x this distance so I'm applying s equals ut horizontally from here to here so that is x here u is 100 horizontally time is should be 2 seconds right from here to here it is 2 so our mass is 200 meters then apply from here to here same equation that is why u is same it is 100 times time is 18 so 1800 meters so depending on these times time period periods you get two, either 200 meters or 1800 meters so the most accurate answer should be 200 meters or 1800 meters fourth one got it Right, seventh question, a projected angle of a projectile is 60 degrees. Sixty degrees, projected angle. Uh, ratio between horizontal range and maximum height, right, is so that is uh, R over capital H. So I'm not going to prove R and H again. I'm going to use these, right? right? So if not, you have to prove that, right? For you, you have to prove that. And then, uh, so R is 2u squared sine theta cos theta divided by G. H is... u squared over 2g sine squared theta then if you divide this that's what they ask horizontal range divided by maximum height so 2u squared divided by g sine theta cos theta divided by u squared over 2g sine squared theta then uh, u squared g squared just cancel the, them this one, one over two, it flips as it goes up, becomes four. Then this sine theta and one of these sine theta cancels off, you get cos theta over sine theta. So what is, so if you take it to this side, it becomes tan theta. So four over tan theta is the ratio between horizontal range and maximum height so if you since you don't you don't you haven't uh, derived this earlier <coughs> you have to derive this and this then get this one right otherwise uh, this won't be this uh, shorter so the angle they say theta is 60 degrees so in this equation r of h equals 4 divided by tan 60 so what is tan 60 tan 60 is root 3 okay so r of h is equal to 4 over root 3 <coughs> fourth answer right 4 over root 3 Sorry, uh, no, not the fourth one, uh, third one, third one. Third one is the answer for uh, se seventh question, that is uh, 4 over root 3. Right, eighth question. A player can short put with a velocity 10 meters per second to any direction. Direction he should short put to gain a horizontal range of 5 meters is... So I'll just, uh, let's say angle is theta. What they're asking is this angle, right, theta. And the horizontal range, 
they say it is 5 meters and this velocity is 10 meters per second right and they are asking for this uh, angle theta you can derive the, you can get you can get equations just using motion equations for these 5 meters but I'm going to use that one right since I have already derived that so they are r is equal to 2u squared over g sine theta cos theta r is given as 5 u is 10 this is u right initial velocity 10 is squared divided by g is also 10 sine theta cos theta 10 cancels so then 5 divided by 10 that is 1 over 2 here remaining 2 sine theta cos theta again when you may have 2 sine theta cos theta you can write it as sine 2 theta so sine 2 theta is equal half half means sine 30 right half means then sine 2 theta equals sine 30 so 2 theta equals 30 theta equals 15 degrees you get an answer for 15 degrees so answer should be second one right if one angle is theta another angle should be what 90 minus theta 90 minus theta means 90 minus 15 which is 75 so the answer should be second one for the eighth question right ninth question a child has the ability to throw a ball at 20 meters per second at any direction Understood? maximum distance he can throw the ball is so at 20 meters per second in order to get the maximum horizontal range you can directly use this one this angle should be 45 degrees so what they ask is actually r max so i'll just use that equation r equals 2u squared divided by g sine theta cos theta you can easily derive this right using uh, motion equations u is 20 squared divided by g means 10 sine theta sine 45 cos 45 2 this is 400 divided by 10 sine root uh, 45 is 1 over root 2 cos 45 also 1 over root 2 this is 2 right 1 over root 2 1 over root 2 this becomes 2 then cancels with this one when you do this it becomes 40 that is 40 meters so the child can throw the ball to a maximum horizontal range of 40 meters according to this one answer is second one right uh, 10th question an object projected with inclination to horizontal touches the top of a pole with height 20 meters at t equals 1 seconds. So let's draw projectile motion, I mean parabolic path. So we have a pole that has a height 20 meters and top of the pole is touched when time is one second object falls to the ground from from here to here 120 meters so these details are given right what they ask is horizontal and vertical velocity uh, components of the initial velo uh, velocity so I'll mark those as V1 and V2. They are not asking anything about uh, this angle. So I'll just, uh, we don't have to involve cos and sine here. 
So I'll just mark those velocity components as V1 and V2. Okay. So then they're asking about the, those magnitudes, magnitudes of these velocity components. Right. What can we do? From here to here, from O to A, I'll apply S equals this equation vertically upwards. What do you get? Vertically 20 meters. Initial velocity V1 time plus half. Uh, this is downwards 10, so minus 10 t squared. Twenty equals v one time. Ah, the time is given, right? From here to here, time is one. Otherwise, it would be complicated. Time is given as one. So here it is v one minus five. Then v one is equal to minus five goes here, then it becomes twenty five meters per second. Right. 25 meters per second. Now we just found V1. Then the thing is we need to find V2. How do we find that? V2. Here, before finding V2, V1 easily can be found. So before finding V2, I'll just find a flying time. If you want, you can substitute. Uh, no, that, that's, that has angles. So substituting that is not going to work. Therefore, I'll find flying time. Flying time is the time for this whole motion. Just apply this equation vertically upwards goes up comes back then s is zero initial velocity component v1 time that is flying time right from here to here not from here to here right for the total motion v1 t plus half minus 10 t squared we found V1, that is 25. You can substitute it here. Then just divide the equation by T. So 25 minus 5T equals 0. 5T take to the other side equals 25. T equals 5 seconds, right? So what do we find? This is the flying time. Flying time means if uh, here the time is 0, here the time should be 5 seconds and the here the time is 1 second, right? So from here to here, time is 1 second. From here to here, time is 5 seconds. So from here to here, time should be 4 seconds, right? Understood? From here to here, time is 1 second. For the whole flying time is 5 seconds. So from here to here, it should be 4 seconds, 5 minus 1. So I'll just apply the equation from A to, let's say this is B, from A to B. A to B means from here to here. I'll apply horizontally. It's equals ut. Ah, that horizontal velocity is given, that is 120. Uh, what is the component? Horizontal component V2, which we need to find times time. Time, what is the time? Four seconds. So V2 is equal to divided by 30. Okay, now we found components. V1 is 25, V2 is 30. So 25 and 30, right? This is the vertical component. That is 25 and the horizontal component is 30 meters per second right uh, so this question is somewhat 
creative question, but it is not hard, right? Once you get that. Uh, so the difference is you just have to apply the equations from here to here. That's the only difference. So once you have the expertise, you should be able to do any of these things, right? Okay. So the answer here should be 25 and 30. So it is. Um, first, there's horizontal component. So the horizontal component is 30. Uh, so the answer should be fifth one, 30 and 25, right? Not 25 and 30. It should be 30 and 25. Fifth one. Right, 11th question. An object projected at an angle 45 degrees and 160 meters per second initial speed. When it is at a vertical height of 500 meters, its speed is, its speed is, speed is, right? Well, let's see. Projected at an angle 45 degrees. And the initial speed is 160 meters per second. It goes like this. Acceleration downwards 10 meters per square second. When it is at a vertical height 560 meters. It's, it's speed. How do you find that? Let's say we don't know. They, they don't say that 560 is uh, maximum height. So let's say uh, it is somewhere here. That is 560. Where's that? Yeah, 560 meters. So here what they ask is speed. So speed means the magnitude of velocity, right? So let's say here for that you need to find velocity components here. At once you cannot find uh, the velocity there. So you have to find velocity components. Vertical components, horizontal components. Horizontal components you already know that should be 160 cos 45, right? Horizontal component doesn't change. So 160 cos 45 is 1 over root 2. So this is the horizontal component which doesn't change V2 here. Thing is, we need to find V1. So to find V1, just apply this U squared plus 2As. So V1 is squared equals upwards 160 sine 45 also root 2 so it get squared plus 2 times minus 10 acceleration downwards height is 560 then v1 is squared we have 160 squared divided by root 2 root 2 is squared is 2 right minus 56 times 2, 112, we have two zeros. Okay, this is 2, 5, 6, 16 times 16, 256, two zeros. Then you have to divide this by 2. If you divide it, 1, 2, 8, 0, 0. You have to subtract this value again, 200. 0, 0, 6, 0061 you get 1600 as v1 is squared so 1600 means what 40 so we found 40 right i mean v1 okay we now we know v1 and v2 both uh, but what they ask is uh, speed speed means uh, magnitude of velocity here it has a velocity here let's say v so how do we find V? V1 is squared plus V2 is squared. V1 is squared means 40 is squared plus V2 is squared means 160 divided by root 2 is squared. 
<clears throat> what do we get? If you take 40 squared out, 40 squared out from this one, inside remains 1, here 160 means 4 squared, 4 times 40, so you take 40 squared out, what's remaining is 4 squared, divided by root 2 squared, meaning 2. So v is equal to what? Now take the root. 40 root means, 40 squared root means 40. Here you have 2 plus 8, 10. 2 plus, sorry, 2 plus, this is 16. 18 divided by 2, 9. 9 root, 3. So 120 meters per second. Let's see, do we have an answer for that? 120 meters per second, yeah. The somewhat, this one is, uh, the. you have to do this calculation without uh, mixing, mixing things up, right? In an easier way, always try to get a full number. I mean, without making this complicated, try to get the answer in a simple way, right? Don't make this complicated as you are doing the calculations. So the answer is fourth one for the eleventh question. Right, in the twelfth question, tan value of velocity that makes it horizontal in the question above. <clears throat> tan value of angle of velocity. Uh, the velocity means the velocity we just found, right? So what, what did we found for those velocities? The velocity here, right? You need to, to find the angle, you need to know uh, these values, velocity values. Uh, they are the horizontal component we got is uh, 160 cos 45, so it is 160 divided by root 2. Then the vertical component, V2, that is 40 meters per second. Then we have this angle. If you want, you can draw rectangle. So this one, 160 divided by root 2. Up here, it is 40. Then this angle is what they ask, theta. So tan theta is what? They're asking tan value. So this side, 40. Opposite side, divided by adjacent side. Adjacent side is 120 root 2. One, four, root two goes up, root two divided by four. Okay, so root two, let's see whether we have an answer for this. Otherwise, you have to form this answer to get an answer. Four means two times two. <clears throat> for those who have difficulties in simplifications, that's why I'm doing all these steps, right? Otherwise, it's not necessary. 2 means root 2 times root 2 is 2. Then another 2 is remain. Cancel one of these root 2. So you have 1 over 2 root 2. Are you sure? So that's the tan value of this angle, 1 over 2 root 2. Right, uh, 13th question. A particle is projected with inclination. So its horizontal range is equal to maximum height. Angle of initial velocity with horizontal direction is, right? So they say horizontal range, that is R, is equal to capital H, right? Horizontal range is equal to capital H. So for this to happen, what they ask, uh, what should be the angle? So I'll just use those ones. So R is 
2u square divided by g sin theta cos theta. h is u square divided by 2g sin square theta. Okay, so I'll get rid of u square and g. So here we have, uh, we put it to, let's keep it like this, uh, 2 sin theta cos theta equals 1 over 2 sin squared theta. This sin theta and one of these sin theta cancels off. Then take this 2 to this side, it becomes 4. So sin theta divided by cos theta, that is tan theta. Do you get? So theta is equal to what? Tan inverse 4. So the answer should be fifth on there. Tan inverse 4. Right. Fourteenth question. Speed of a projectile at the maximum height is half of its initial speed. So projectile uh, initial speed is u. Uh, speed at the top. Top means here. So at the top, velocity is only horizontal. Since they mention speed, so it is half. Vertical component is zero there, right? If you you don't have to put that, if you want, you can put it as zero there. So what they ask is a horizontal range under these circumstances. Right. So let's say this angle is theta. What do we know? Horizontal velocity is always constant, doesn't change. So if you think about horizontal velocity here, it is u cos theta. And obviously, vertical component u sin theta. So you can see u cos theta and the here velocity should be same, right? Because this is constant. So u cos theta equals u over 2. U cancels off, cos theta equals half. Cos theta half means what? Theta is 60 degrees. That is what we needed to find first, right? Before finding the horizontal range. Then if you want, you can use that equation there. Since you know the U and angle. So I'll just use that. Or else you can just uh, find flying time first. Then apply horizontally. I'm going to use that. 2 is squared over G sine theta cos theta. 2 is squared over G sine 60 cos 60. 2u squared over g sin 60 is what? Root 3 over 2. Cos 60 is 1 over 2. So these two, these two cancels off. Root 3u squared over 2g, that is r. Third one, right? Third one is the answer. So if you don't get a quick understand the explanation, please watch that, rewatch that particular question, right? Because uh, these questions are like uh, time stamped below uh, under the description, they are time stamped, right? So you can watch the question again, then it will make sense what happens there. Right. Fifteenth <clears throat> question, a huge number of bullets is shot in all the directions with initial velocity u. Maximum area they will land on ground is. So here you have to understand the question. So to any direction, the bullets can be shot. So we know only for 45 degrees, the bullet bullets will have the maximum range, right? So let's say the gun is at the center of a circle and the maximum distance, this radius should be the maximum distance. So angle should be 45 degrees and the velocity is like this. So this R is represented here. 
when you look from above, right? So within this area, only within this area, there is a chance that you would hit, hit with a bullet. Right? Beyond that area, it is not possible. So what they ask is uh, this area of this circle. So to find that, uh, before that, we need to find this R, radius of that circle. How do you find that? I'll just use that. So R is equal u squared 2g, sorry, u squared, 2u squared or g sin theta cos theta. So 2u squared g sin 45 cos 45. 2 squared over g sin 45 is 1 over root 2 cos 45 also 1 over root 2 so root 2 root 2 2 cancels with this 2 so r is u squared over g this is the maximum range right r max which becomes the radius of this circle then you can find the area that is 5 r squared 5 r is what u squared over g squared. So you get 5 u4 divided by g squared. So this is the area. Four. That is second answer, right? So that is the 15th question. That is the second answer for the 15th question. Right? Again, I have to tell you that if you complete, if you didn't Understand? Just rewatch this. Somehow you have to understand this because this lesson, if you have hundred percent understanding of this one, then you you will be confident enough to do any type of vector calculations, right? So the uh, math uh, mathematical skills required for the remaining part of the syllabus as well will be covered from this. Mathematical skills means uh, when it comes to vectors, right? Right. Okay.